I mean, were you linked or are you linked to the CIA? But it says on your biography page at ISI Consulting that you have experience working with various U.S. intelligence agencies. Which U.S. intelligence agencies have you worked with? Ends, but first, to reports of genocide in China. I am joined from Hedden, Virginia, by Rushan Abbas, Executive Director of the Campaign for Uyghurs. Rushan, thanks so much for uh, coming on the show. Last week, uh, we heard denials from Wang Liu from the Center for China and Globalization uh, about uh, genocide in uh, Xinjiang. Uh, how many millions of Uyghur minority people are detained? Currently, more than 3 million Uyghurs are detained in the concentration camps. And the, uh, when you speak to every single Uyghur in diaspora, they have one or more family members are taken. My husband's entire family is taken from Khotan in the southern part where the most of the Uyghurs are living. My parents-in-laws, my three sister-in-laws, their husbands, and my brother-in-law and his wife, and the 14 of my husband's nieces and nephews, 24 family members from entire family, they are missing. And my own sister is missing since September 2018, and she was taken clearly as a retaliation for my advocacy work here in America. I spoke at the uh, uh, one of the think tanks here in Washington, D.C., Hudson Institute, on September 5th, 2018. Six days later, my sister and my aunt both were abducted from two different cities as a retaliation for my uh, exercising my freedom of speech in America as an American citizen. So this is happening to every single Uyghurs in diaspora. So there is more than three million people are taken into the concentration camps today. Arguably, the Hudson Institute uh, argues for regime change all around the world. But you said three million. Well, what is the population of Xinjiang? Because if it's 12 million, which the BBC number is, yes, that means yes. a quarter of all According Uyghurs are currently in detention. I mean, how, how much would that cost the Chinese government, uh, let alone uh, what human rights abuses that would constitute? Yes, Afshin, when you look at the uh, consensus from the Chinese government, they say 12 million Uyghurs. But according to Uyghur consensus, more than 20 million Uyghurs is the population. I've heard the numbers are 25 million. So there's been a massive increase in the number of Uyghurs since 2000, when there were only 8.4 million. 8.4 million is also, that is the uh, consensus, that's the numbers from the Chinese population, um, Chinese government. In reality, back in 2004 even, the Uyghur population was 25 million, more than 25 million. Now our uh, uh, Uyghur intellectuals did their own consensus like five years ago, back in 2016, that was more than 20 million Uyghurs is the population, when the Chinese government was saying it's only 11 million. Okay, but I mean, as far as things stand, your understanding is a quarter of all Uyghurs are now uh, in Chinese detention. Why do you think it is that when uh, journalists were allowed into Xinjiang in August of 2019, they came from all over the world, um, they didn't find any evidence of genocide or the mass detentions? In November 2019, the World Bank visit found no aberrations uh, as regards human rights, uh, let alone genocide. If you remember during the Holocaust, uh, if you have seen the pictures and the films, how uh, the Nazi Germany put up a show for the uh, Red Cross people coming in and the checking. The same thing, the Chinese government is putting up stages basically, bringing like the actors and the uh, people who are being coached to say what they have to say and the uh, jumping around and the dancing. When you look at it, you know, the Uyghurs are facing forced marriages. Uyghur women are forced to marry Han Chinese men. If they refuse, they are being called extremists for refusing. And the, the Uyghur women are facing mass rape, mandatory birth control, forced sterilizations, torture, brainwashing, forced labor, organ harvesting. Crematorias are being built next to the concentration camps for a culture that doesn't practice cremation. We are Muslims. We don't practice crem uh, cremation. So this is all building 
up to a genocide. Clearly, there are a lot of bad journalists out there. So you're saying all those journalists, they don't know what, what's really going on. You, of course, uh, uh, worked at Guantanamo Bay prison camp, the U.S. torture camp. You're saying it's worse, actually, the conditions in Xinjiang than when you were working de facto for the U.S. government facilitating the torture in Guantanamo. That was not my words, uh, the, the situation back in uh, East Turkestan, we call it Xinjiang is the name given to us by the Chinese regime, uh, that the, the situation back home, not in the concentration camps, but just regular people like me and you, their lives are worse than the, how the uh, detainees in Guantanamo Bay. That was the words from the former Uyghur Guantanamo detainees. The Uyghurs, 20, one of the you know, 22 Uyghurs. So I worked in Guantanamo as an Uyghur translator. I was translating for those people. You wore military uniform in Guantanamo while the torture no, I was, I was, was just going a on. Con yes, I was just a contracted linguist. But at the beginning, all the civilians were wearing uniform and they are a, a name tag called contractor. I have a pictures calling contractor here. I was not in the military. But I am so happy that I was be able to give linguistic support to those 22 innocent Uyghurs, where I assisted them because they were wrongfully accused uh, because of you know, the situation back home. They escaped from the persecution. They didn't have they any were... sympathy with Al-Qaeda. They didn't have any sympathy with Al-Qaeda or the 9-11 attacks, the Uyghurs no, who were in Guantanamo. They... No. Those 22 Uyghurs, they had nothing to do with 9-11. They have nothing to do with terrorists. These Uyghur men were in desperate need of language support. And they, I was even requested by those men to translate for their defense team. So hence, I help and they, I uh, advocate them on their release. The Chinese government is the one who are accusing them for being terrorists. You see, when, when, you, invoke, when you invoke the Holocaust, obviously, uh, when it comes to uh, invoking genocide, these kinds of human rights abuses, this is exactly what the United States have done to justify wars in Libya, Afghanistan, Syria, Iraq, um, across uh, Latin America. I know you've been asked before about this. Why do you take funding from the National Endowment for Democracy, knowing uh, the brutality and the tens of millions killed, wounded, tortured, or displaced at the hands of National Endowment for Democracy policies around the world? Well, we established Campaign for Uyghurs in the fall of 2017 in order to advocate for this massive, unprecedented human rights atrocity in the world after the Holocaust. We found Campaign for Uyghurs 2017. My sister was abducted in September 2018. I quit my full-time job as an international business development director from the consulting firm that I was working. And I became full-time activist on one year anniversary of my sister's abduction. Funded by the National Endowment for Democracy. I mean, we started getting funding from October 2019. So the I campaign for Uyghurs gets no funding us. from the National Endowment no, for Democracy no, at all? absolutely not. Absolutely not. At you all. can look at okay. the public records. I what was doing a full-time job, and I was funding myself, the organization, giving us the ability to be the voice for those millions of voiceless Uyghur people, those millions of people who are suffering. So that's all I care and I know. So many of these people who are accusing me of being... Um, working for CIA and getting money from NED. Those are the genocide apologists. Those are the exact same words the um, uh, Chinese uh, foreign ministry is saying. Actually, uh, CCP's uh, MOFA spokesperson, Li Jianzhao, about a year ago, he tweeted publicly using exact same uh, those words. He tried to demonize me and discredit my work. Okay, well, because honestly, I, this doesn't come from the Communist justice. Party of China. I mean, I have to ask, did, I mean, were you linked or are you linked to the CIA? No, absolutely not. Because it says, on your bio, but it says on your biography page at ISI Consulting 
that you have experience working with various U.S. intelligence agencies. Which U.S. intelligence agencies have you worked with? It, I don't think it says intelligence agency. It does. It says different it does. ministries. Extent um, she has also extensive experience working with Homeland Security, Department of Defense, the Pentagon, yeah. and various U.S. intelligence agencies. Which U.S. intelligence okay. agencies did you work with? When I was working at the Leo Daily architectural firm, our company designed FBI headquarters. So that's my business development work. And I worked with Department of Defense, State Department, Homeland Security on the releasing of those 22 Uyghurs from Guantanamo. I was working with them and advocating for those 22 Uyghurs. When you were working for the military contractor L3, um, mm -hmm. I think under Titan Consulting, which was involved in the Abu Ghraib torture scandal, this was all just as a translator. You weren't okay. carrying yes, out the yes, torture. Absolutely. They would be tortured. They would be absolutely. tortured, and then they would I, yes. say their piece, and you would translate their work. I mean, the right. problem I here, as you know, for all the agencies, you name it, in Guantanamo, because they were interrogating those 22 Uyghurs. I was translating. I was working as a contractor for L3 as a translator. I was working whoever, you know, the Titan it became, or L3, I was working as a translator. I was hired as a consultant. I mean, I, I was hired as a, a linguist consultant translating and the, uh, being uh, basically language support for those 22 Uyghurs. Larry Wilkerson, who is the chief of staff at Colin Powell, has been on this program. And he says the route to regime change in China, because the U.S. has 400 bases encircling China right now, military bases, is through Xinjiang. Do you see why members of your family, you said it was retaliation for your advocacy work, do you see why your sister might be detained or might choose not to speak to you, given your links to the U.S. military industrial complex? My sister has two daughters. The both daughters live in the United States. And the, uh, my sister is a retired medical doctor. This is, <laughs> okay, let me, let, let me just go back a little bit, you know. This is, uh, I am speechless because of those uh, a kind of accusations. I am absolutely speechless. So when I raised my sister's case in the December 2000. Uh, you know, when I, I have been speaking very vocally since my sister's abduction in the September 2018, I have been being very vocal. I have been raising my sister's case. December 2019, the Chinese state media, the uh, Global Times Network, accused me of carrying a stolen photo of others and making up my own sister. And they attacked our organization. You can look this up. I can send you the link. But later, my sister's two daughters, who both are living in the United States, they learned that their mother has been given a harsh prison sentence in March 2019, nine months before the Chinese state media published libel against me and against our organization. So... This uh, kind of claiming that, you know, they are trying to say my sister didn't want to talk to me or regime change this and that. Those are all a kind of, you know, like a posturous attacks to uh, discrediting my work and the dehumanizing me. So I guess my messaging has been clear about this genocide. It, I am not only talking about the victim's sister, you know, my sister is in a concentration camp, but I am talking with the three sets of leaked documents the Chinese government has. There are three sets of official documents stating the uh, Chinese government's genocidal action. We hope you find your sister soon, Gulshan, and uh, obviously the Chinese government denies genocide uh, in, uh, in any way in Xinjiang. Rushan Abbas, thank you.